Hey gang, welcome to the Wilson Combat Channel. My name is Massa Yub, and before I do anything else, I want to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already, and to hit the notification bell. That'll uh, let you know when new content drops and you'll be the first on the block to see it. I'm going to talk today about the tactical reload and keeping the tactical reload tactical. First, let's define the tactical reload. If we have shot our pistol to slide lock and the magazine is empty, and we still desperately need to shoot. We're not doing anything tactical. We're doing a speed reload or an emergency reload. Two terms for the same thing. Got the dead battery out, got a fresh battery in, close the slide and get a torpedo in the launch tube and go back to suppressing whatever threat there is. The rationale of the tactical reload is this. X number of shots have been depleted from your gun. You still have rounds in the gun. You think things are over. And you'll always hear the phrase, do your tactical reload during a lull in the action. You will also hear a whole lot of gunfight survivors saying, where the hell was the lull in the action? It was on and then it was over. But basically, you think the problem's been solved. You have just been in a shooting. The danger appears to be resolved, but we're not sure it is. We know there's such a thing as tunnel vision. We may have tunneled on our opponent and not yet determined that there's a second opponent waiting in the weeds. So we want to get a fully loaded gun back in our hand ready. We don't want to throw away the spare ammo that might still be in that gun because if the full magazine gets depleted in the second stage of events, we might have to resort to that as our last ditch ammo supply. So in the tactical reload, we're removing a partially depleted magazine and replacing it with a full one. Let's look at an appropriate way to do it into practice. We have here a Wilson Beretta 92 Compact. All the ammunition we'll be using is dummy rounds with the primers removed. First, for the training, we start where we'll have, we'll have stopped. The last shot's been fired. That means our finger's already on the trigger to start. So let's start our practice that way. Don't always be practicing a tactical reload with the finger out here, or you haven't programmed yourself to get the finger off the trigger out there in the first place. So we start here first finger off trigger. Scan your area. And depending on the situation, we, we can talk more about tactical scans later, but basically make sure that you've done a 360. Might want to even change positions and not be where you were before. Now, if we're going to be doing this fumble prone procedure, we're going to decock the pistol if it's double action like this Beretta, or we would on safe a 1911 like this one. We're going to come back here and get the fresh magazine. We're not going to dump the mag here until this hand comes up to it. Now we're going to dump into here, insert, and come back up and cover the threat zone. Why are we doing that? Well, listen to the sound and tell me what this sounds like to you. Does that sound like some poor SOB trying to reload an empty gun? We may have just given a wounded rabbit call to the coyotes if there are more perpetrators out there looking for a, a safe spot. Now we scan the area again. Now we can put this away. Getting this hand back on the gun now is a priority because that sound of you reloading could call in the next of the wolf pack. Grasped like this, you've only got about three fingers on the gun. It's a whole lot more than having the hand here when you get the signal to engage for the second time. Now, what do we do with this? We have our partial mag. Conventional wisdom has always been put it in the pocket so you won't mix it up with your other magazines. The problem with that is very few of us get habituated, if this fight does revive into a second stage, few of us are habituated to reach to our pocket for a spare magazine. And we'll find ourselves fumbling and doing the combat Mac arena until the hand finally finds, aha, there's where I left it. So what I suggest, if you have a double pouch or two pouches, do your tactical load from the rear cell, that is the rear pouch. Now when we come up, this one comes out, this one goes in. We put this back into that back pouch, but we put it in backwards. Because it's backwards, that sharp edge is gonna to present to the reaching hand if subsequently it does go there. And that sharp edge says, hey hand, that's our last ditch suicide magazine. We've got a fresh one right here in front of it. If the second stage of the fight involves a speed reload, this is the hand that's habituated to do that. 
So that's why I want the speed reload mag in the front pouch. I want the tack reload mag in the back. We'll look next at the actual manipulation of the tactical reload. There have been different approaches to the manipulation of the tactical reload. Some work better than others, and we'll show you the pros and cons of each and leave it up to you. One became known as the reload with retention in uh, IDPA competition, and that was remove the magazine, put it away, grab the fresh one, do like you would in a regular speed load, and then leave your position, advance, do whatever you had to do. Did you notice how long we were down to just a single shot pistol in our hand while that one hand was putting this one away and then reaching for the other one? That's longer than I want to be stuck with a single shot pistol. Another approach popularly taught by uh, a master shooter who's no longer with us was removing the magazine and putting it here and then inserting this fresh magazine and then putting this one away. I never cared for that. His argument in favor of it was that other techniques allowed the student to mix up the magazines and put the depleted one back in the gun. I just didn't see that happen, or maybe I just had a, a smarter level of students than he had been working with. This is not the way you want to be holding your pistol if a fight begins. It horribly compromises your grasp on the gun. Also, if you look close, this magazine here can get in the way and block a full insertion of the magazine you're trying to put back in. So that technique is one that I would not recommend to you. One that I always liked was come up with a spare mag, grab here, and snap in like that. It allowed me about 90% of a two-handed grasp, very quick, scan the area, no problem, now I can put this away. Trouble with it was, didn't work for every shooter with every hand. If you had, for example, a smooth-bodied 1911 magazine, you didn't have that little flange here that you know, could, could catch between the fingers and it could slip out. Uh, we found also people with shorter fingers had difficulty with it. So the one that I teach now is one that goes way, way back and has some great credentials to it. Uh, this was the technique that I believe was pioneered at Gunsight, by, actually prior to Gunsight, by Colonel Jeff Cooper, the founder of Gunsight and the American Pistol Institute. You'll see pictures of his hands on his signature gun performing that in one of Cooper's 1960 books. It was picked up on by Clint Smith, who uh, at one time was lead instructor at Gunsight. And I learned it from Clint uh, when my daughter and I took their advanced course at Thunder Ranch. And I found it worked very well for most people with most magazines, so that's what I went with. Essentially, we, we grab our fresh magazine. Now as we come up, look at my hand. We've, we're doing this, the standard grasp that we'd have to insert during a speed reload. But now this is going to happen. We're going to move the index finger just to here. And what that does, we're holding the, the new magazine like we'd hold a cigar or something but the thumb and the index finger now are free to do a pincher effect. They come under the gun, they catch that depleted mag and pull it out. Now just rotate into here, roll this hand out so it doesn't block the insertion, slap it in, back up on the threat. We've got three fingers wrapped around here. We've got our threat covered. Okay, we, the sound of us reloading has not drawn in a secondary attack. Now we can put this away wherever we've chosen to put it and come back to here. Again, remember that the tactical reload will begin on safing the 1911 type pistol or decocking the double action. So again, what we're looking for, about like that. If it's gonna be a tactical reload, you wanna do it tactically. Take into account there could be a secondary assault. That lull in the action could be very temporary. You want a loaded pistol back in your hand, ready to go as soon as you can. You want to decock or run safe because it's a fumble-prone procedure. A very famous master shooter, no longer with us, shot a 45 caliber hole in the wall of his office practicing tactical reloads. Bring it all together, keep it safe, make it second nature. I'm not sure you'll ever need it in a gunfight. None of us know if we ever will. 
But you know what, if you're in a cl shooting class and there's a muddy, muddy range and you really don't want to be dumping your empty mags into the dirt, or you're on a public range and if the, you drop the magazine and it bounces off the table down range, you can't retrieve it until much later, this allows everything to be saved and you're cool. And looking cool is important in the 21st century in America. We'll catch you down the road at other Wilson Combat presentations.